We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your tea cups ready because this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey, you guys, it's your girl T, and I hope everybody's doing good today, honey. Make sure y'all have y'all's tea cups ready because this tea is what? Piping hot. And before I get started, make sure y'all hit that subscribe button. And if you want to be a part of my notification squad, honey, make sure you hit that bell so that we can get notified via phone or email every time I post a video. Shout out to my notification squad. I see y'all in the comment section. Hey. <laughs> So anyways, y'all, I wanted to come on here and talk about the whole DJ Academics Joe Button situation. The situation has not truly died down yet, and I know there's a lot of drama that went on yesterday. I wasn't able to do any videos. I had acting class and I had dance class yesterday. Y'all know I got to keep busy outside of YouTube, honey, okay? So anyways, so when I got home, I was following up on all the drama. And what went down is that yesterday, Joe Button took to his podcast, because we all know he has his own podcast called the Joe Button Podcast. So he was on there with his hosts, Roy and Mal, and they're basically once again talking about the whole um, Migo situation that happened this past weekend during the BET Awards. So what happened is that basically um, Joe Button gets on there and he calls DJ Academics one of the biggest pussies he's ever seen in his life. He says when it comes to physicality, he needs to just stop talking. He's not a physical person. He's a pussy. There's nothing wrong with being a pussy. He just needs to sit in the corner and shut up. Honey, when I heard him say that, I had to clutch my invisible damn pearls. I'm like, damn, Joe. Really, Joe? Wow. Anyways, y'all go ahead and check out this small snippet of Joe Button going in on DJ Academics. Check this out. I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. Academics is one of the biggest pussies I've ever seen in my entire life. But he, yeah. he should never comment on anything that has to do with physicality. <laughs> but, but, we, but we knew that already. I don't more, fault and, him for being a pussy when you know he's a pussy. Well, you got to stop talking sometimes when you're oh, pussy, I, well, is, I, what I'm, is what ben, I mean. That's what <laughs> I've been saying that, and Charlamagne no, killed yeah. me for saying that. I agree. <laughs> I agree. There's nothing wrong with being pussy, but you got to be pussy to the corner sometimes. Just shut up. The interviews, all the niggas you would think would skip them. Skipped them. They had a lot to do with the awards, so I, I think it was fine. I mean, that that's a moot point. They did the fucking interview. They wanted to do the interview, but I wasn't gonna say a word to him. I gave it to academics who's bright eyed and has never been in this environment on this red carpet dealing with this type of commotion. Academics is ignoring the producers that screaming to wrap it up. He's doing all types of shit. And then in the middle of the interview, well, how the, much how much wasn't on there? Obviously, it was edited. It was a lot edited. Okay, it, how, it, how did the interview? Oh, begin? so it was a, it was more than that. That was just it like it definitely looked like it was. Cut. It was much more. So oh, how, how, okay. it was That's much more now. awkwardness. Oh, it was much okay, more okay. tension. Okay. In the middle of the interview, the gentleman that I spoke to in the morning intervenes to say, "And me and Joe, he don't know what's being said in the interview. He just jumps in. Yeah, me and Joe had a talk this morning. All that yachty shit is dead. Huh? That wasn't. A that was a little odd to just bring up. Nah, I mean, well, yeah, you're right. I did say that the Yachty shit. Mm -hmm. I'm never saying nothing about Yachty. But that's the, the energy's a little different now. Now I'm putting that with the mall. Now I'm putting that with Migos has come up. I'm putting that with Yachty storming by, uh, looking mad, uh, not saying hi back to academics. You're just putting all this shit together, and I'm supposed to, and I'm putting complex and academics wanting to interview these niggas so fucking bad that I never want to talk to them in the fucking first place. Now I'm sitting here, and I got to stare at these fucking accessories and fucking shiny shirts. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're telling me? Because I've decided to change my career course? Yeah. Suck my dick. That's what that's what comes with it. Hell no, no, so, no. That ain't the way that I do my media. I don't want to talk to nobody that and don't want to sit there. No. But that happens though. N no, it's not going to happen, is what I'm saying. That happened past tense on the red carpet. Mm -hmm. Future reference. No, 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 no. All right, so you guys just heard that small snippet. So of course that whole situation went viral. Now, on top of that, Charlemagne the God also spoke about this on The Breakfast Club with Angela Yee. He was talking about the whole red carpet situation with the Migos, and he kind of called Joe Button out. He was not feeling what Joe Button did. And he said the same type of energy that he has when he talks about them, you know, on everyday struggle, he needs to have the same type of energy when he sees them to his face. So I want y'all to go ahead and chat with Charlemagne the God. had to sign The Breakfast Club. Go ahead and check this out, and I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. Let's be clear. Joe is lame. And Joe, my guy, but Joe is lame for editing P into interrupting the interview out. I don't agree with editing interviews simply because you didn't come off in the best light. All those interviews you've ever seen from the Breakfast Club where an artist got tight with me from B 
Beanie Siegel, the Federal Star. I could have edited, but I would it's never do man. that because it's whack. Birdman, you can't say what you want about people, and then when people flex on All you, right. you edit it out. Let me finish. Let's get these f***ing <laughs> arrogant f- the f- out our seats so we can talk to some people who actually want to be spoken to. All right, dog. Wrap it up. Arrogant asses. Let's get to it. Speak about it. I day. can give two f***s about Migos. See, this is my thing. What? Joe Button. Joe's my guy, but why didn't you have that energy when Migos was sitting right there? Why you didn't tell them they were arrogant? And why you didn't tell them get the F out when they were sitting there? I want that same energy when the artist is sitting in your face. And I think it's very lame that you edited P from Quality Control out. P interrupted the interview. Well, did the, the whole interview's out already? I haven't yes, seen it. Yes, it is out. And P interrupted it. And he just told y'all he edited it out. P interrupted the interview and P told him th- to stop talking about Lil Yachty. And Joe agreed that he would stop talking about Lil Yachty. I'm like, why edit that out? Oh, he you know didn't why he say edited? all that just now. Yes, he did. He just said he, 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 just said he edited it out. Yeah, that's what he just right. said. Yeah. They, they played it again. I just didn't see the full play No, again. we have other rumors to get to. Oh, so well, I just, talk about I, just, this I, I, just think, I just think it's very whack. You're very passionate. To, to edit somebody. You know, whether they checking you, whether they getting at you, you can't say what you want about people and then edit them out of the interview. That's lame, Joe. I was wondering where's complex of security. Like, if they're doing an interview, nobody should be able to jump in the middle of the interview and say anything. They ain't making that kind of money yet. All right, yeah. now. <laughs> let's- All right, so y'all just heard what Charlamagne the God had to say. And I, and I get where Charlamagne is coming from. You know, if you're going to say one thing, you know, on the air or away from somebody, be down to say it to their face. Be down to have that same energy. And then he was also speaking about the whole editing thing and how he doesn't allow things to be edited, which I respect because it's like, what's the point of filming stuff if you're going to cut it and edit it out? That doesn't make any sense. We don't get to see the full picture. So I understand that. But let's keep it real. There's been plenty of times where Charlemagne has been confronted and he didn't have that same energy. You know, even with the whole Birdman situation, he didn't back down. He didn't run out the studio scared, but he wasn't rah, rah, sis, boom, ba in his face either. So, you know, so let's keep it real. It's a lot different to have super hype, you know, energy when the person you're not talking about is there as opposed to when they're in front of you. And that's just kind of like the love hate relationship of the Internet. That's why people can get in the comment section and be, you know, rah, rah, sis, boom, ba. That's why I consider half the people that be in the comment section talking shit, nothing more than keyboard killers and broadband gangsters, which outside of the Internet, they won't bust a grape. So that's the thing. When you get around people, your energy is definitely going to shift because you can't bring that same rah-rah energy to everybody because once you're in somebody's face in real time, there's consequences for whatever actions you decide to doll out. You know what I'm saying? So I see where Charlamagne is coming from, but please don't act like anytime you've had some type of issue with somebody, you was just rah-rah in their face. You just kind of stood your ground and said what you had to say. So, you know, once these videos went viral, everybody and their mama has something to say about it. A lot of folks were attacking Joe, saying Joe is two-faced. How dare he, you know, try and call AK a pussy? Eventually, DJ Academics took to Twitch, and he wanted to explain his side of the story. He was very upset about, you know, the things that Joe Budden said. He talked about it for about 20 minutes to 30 minutes on Twitch. I'm just going to go ahead and show you guys some of the snippets that I, you know, that I really took away from. So go ahead and check this out real quick. And Complex has been nothing but understanding. They understand, and a lot of them agree. They're not with the editing shit either. You know what I mean? That's some fucked up shit that some other shit happened. You get me? So I don't want to throw Complex under the bus. But... To insinuate, listen, it's Joe and the producers that had this shit taken out. Like, let's keep it real, man. Listen, they try to tell me why this shit was not in there. Basically, from what I saw, homie, which is P from Migos, or not Migos, but QC, he tried to press Joe. Now, again, maybe my definition of pressing is different, but when I, when we're doing an interview and a nigga comes right over your shoulder and looks at you and say, yo, listen, remember what we talked about? We not on camera. We ain't going to talk about Yachty. Say it. We ain't going to talk about Yachty, right? You agree. It looks like that nigga pressed you. That's what it looked like to me. Now, why they took it out, I wasn't involved in that process because I don't want nothing to be taken out. If I wanted shit to be taken out, you think I would have said, hey, let's go ahead with Vic Mensa saying, you a bitch, I'm going to slap you. I don't want shit to ever be taken out. Why are we going to be filming if we're going to be editing shit? And that's why I didn't know how much was going to be taken out. That's why I didn't know how much the narrative was going to be spun. So I knew something was going to be like, taking i'm like all right but then when i seen how the reaction was everyone's like yo academics you caused this you know how and, and this is what i'm saying yo i don't know if it's uh, what well, it's not concerted because i've talked to a lot of people like it's not complex doing it i think it's specific people when i look like the crazy one like i'm asking a question to get these no these niggas were on edge they tried to press you twice and that's my whole thing like i don't know how joe explains it 
I told him, I said, bro, you know they try to press you twice. I don't know if he calls that a pressing, but when niggas is coming at you like, yo, you're going to do this, right? And and, and you're acquiescing. I, I think that's a press, but I'm not a street nigga. So maybe pressing is something else. But for me, that looked like somebody's pressing you, okay? The only footage that is in is the footage where I'm asking, and it's the most awkward question because we can't hear, hear each other. And, and this is the thing that frustrates me too. If we edit out, if we edit out all that shit, why not edit out the part where I'm not asking the nigga the same question five times? Because I'm not trying to play him. I really can't hear him. And you know this because you're here with me. No, that's left up. That's why. Th that's why I resent all of this shit because I was, you know, what I mean, after I I've talked to all these motherfuckers, and I was fine. Believe me, I was fine. But when we're still going with this narrative that I'm this pussy and I did this, nigga, I ain't do. Yo, this situation is not on me. I would never, ever have them cut that footage because, again, it would look weird. It looks like some real... I w I'm not creating reality TV. I'm not creating fake news. That's the exact thing that happened. Man, I, s I see they're not going at me. I'm trying to say, yo, chill. Chill, because I, I don't want him to attack my co-host. I don't want him to fuck up the set. I don't want him to fuck up... We were having a pretty good day. I go I'm the only person in between... The I'm not saying I saved nobody. Don't get that fucked up. But I'm I go towards the shit saying, everybody chill, please. Chill, chill, chill. You hear me saying it. All right, so you guys just saw what DJ Academics had to say. And to me, he made a lot of good points. One thing I like that he said is that he did not want his co-host attacked. He didn't want, you know, the Migos to fuck up the set. And he was the one that literally jumped in between Migos and Joe while Joe walked off. Everything was kind of not, everything was kind of on DJ Academics. And he's like, you know, how are you going to call me a pussy? But you walked off and I was trying to have your back. And I definitely agree with him on that because thinking back when I watched that whole Vic Mensa situation and when Vic Mensa was pressing DJ Academics, Joe Button was loving it. Oh, he was loving it, okay? He was, I mean, after a while, it was like, yo, Joe, whose side are you on? Like, he was riding hard with Vic. You know, everything that Vic was calling him out on, Joe was like, mm-hmm, yep, you were doing that war on Chirac. Uh-huh, you were talking about, you know, Chirac savages. It's like Joe Button literally left DJ Academics out to dry, whereas in this situation, DJ Academics was trying to have his co-host back, even after all the nonsense Joe Button did to him during the whole Vic Mensa situation. Okay. There was nothing constructive about it. There was nothing constructive about it, and I'm gonna tell you the truth. I, I, I really, I really think you're a bitch. Now, one thing I do want to address is the whole editing, and I stated this in my other video when I first talked about the whole Migos altercation with DJ Academics and Joe Button, is that um, I don't agree with the editing part of it. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like Complex News is definitely, you know, they definitely have a hand in that, along with Joe Button. What I find funny is that you guys were removing the part of Migos' management team, um, P from Quality Control, confronting Joe Button, but yet and still, y'all yeah, didn't remove the part when, you know, Vince Mensa went off on academics and called him all types of bitches and said he wanted to slap him. So it seems like, from what I've seen from the viral stories, like I said, I don't watch Everyday Struggle, you know, like that. I only watch it when it's something viral going on with that platform. And it looks like from what I've seen, just from, you know, the interactions I've seen between Joe and DJ Academics, I feel at times they're not on the same page and there's really no loyalty to them. Like when I listen to Joe Button's podcast, I feel like he has somewhat of a loyalty to Rory and Mal. Like they work really good together. They're able to feed off of each other. I don't see that with um, DJ Academics, Joe Button and the female, I think her name is N Nadeska. I don't see them gelling. Like when I watch them, I don't see like the same vibe from DJ MV, Charlemagne the God, and Angela Yee. Like they're like those three from the Breakfast Club are not gonna allow anybody to come into the studio and disrespect any one of them. And I feel like when I watch the few times I watch Everyday Struggle, it's almost like Joe Button and DJ Academics are more in competition with each other. Like their vibes just don't gel. Like DJ Academics is more like he he's a fan of a lot of people and he's very excited. And like Joe said, he's bright eyed and bushy tailed. Whereas Joe's like, you know, I've been in this industry for a long time. He understands the fakeness behind the industry and Joe's not here for it. And of course, in every show, you need kind of like that bad guy. You need the antagonist. So I understand what Complex is doing, but what I don't respect is the editing factor because when you're taking out whole conversations and whole things, then it's turning into a narrative in which it wasn't meant to be. And this narrative is making DJ Academics look bad. You know, it's making him look like a punk. It's making him look like a fanboy. 
and he's constantly having to defend himself, it looks like, on Twitch. And then if one person who's supposed to be a co-host has editing control over another person, that's not okay. Either you're going to put up everybody's interviews up there as it is, you know what I'm saying, regardless of what goes down, or you're going to edit everybody's interview to be fair. Like, don't throw DJ Academics under the bus by showing him getting cussed out and getting called a bitch and getting threatened by Vic Mensa. But then when Joe gets pressed twice, then all of a sudden y'all got to take that out. You know, so it left a lot of things out of context, which I did not agree with. So basically, today, everybody was waiting for them to meet up because we saw DJ Academics going off on Twitch. We saw Joe Button going off on his podcast. And then this morning, Complex News posted um, Everyday Struggle, and I decided to catch it this time. And all this raw, raw, sis, boom, bye energy was left at the damn door. And if it wasn't left at the door, it had to have been edited out because... This whole reunion was so fake and forced and, oh, kumbaya, and I love you guys, and it's water under a bridge. I mean, the whole situation was laughable. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys a small snippet. Hopefully, they won't flag this shit. Go ahead and check out this small snippet right here. And you guys can fucking ruin some fun. Like, Jesus. We're uh, done? I'm good. It's last chance. Get it all out. I don't want to hear nothing else about this ever again. I, you want me to keep going No, in? no, no. I'm just saying this is it. We're done. <laughs> Come Go on. ahead. You can do it. Go ahead. Hey. Just keep consistent. I right, joke. That's, hey. that's you guys are like children. All right. All right. So you guys just saw that small snippet. So, you know, you know, th that's cool that y'all want to be cool today. And, you know, a lot of people are getting at Nadeska saying that she should let them be men and let them air out all their grievances. She shouldn't have got up involved and all that stuff. You know, I feel like this. I feel like in a way DJ Academics is being mistreated on this show. Um, and the reason why this show is as popular as it is is because of his fan base. Because if you look at Everyday Struggle, if you look at the Complex, um, if you look at Complex in general, they didn't have a million subscribers before DJ Academics came to their um, platform. They have not, they're not at like 1.9 million. Like a lot of DJ Academics fans came to Complex and subscribed and started supporting their platform only because of Everyday Struggle. Just like a lot of Joe Budden's fans from the Joe Budden podcast came to Complex to subscribe only to support Joe Budden in Everyday Struggle. So I feel like, you know, they're using both of them at this point in time. You know, when you're sitting here editing certain things, when you're sitting there using Joe's rah-rah personality, and then you're sitting there throwing DJ Academics under the bus, I feel like in a way he's getting the short end of the stick. But at the end of the day, he's a grown man. So if he doesn't want to do something, if he's no longer comfortable with it, he needs to be adult enough to know when to walk away, especially being that he has his own brand, he has his own YouTube channel, he has a big following, so he doesn't necessarily need Complex. Even Joe Button, you know what I'm saying? He doesn't really need Complex either because... He's doing his own thing on his podcast, which is pretty popular. You know, so the whole situation is crazy, but I just find it funny that it was so much rah, rah, sis, boom, ba. It was all this hyped up testosterone yesterday on both of their parts. But now when they come together, it's like, okay, we're cool. It's water under a bridge. And maybe they talked about it outside of camera. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if they did. But I do believe that for the fans, they needed to see that aired out on camera. Being that both of these guys were going back to their own um, personal platforms and venting and ranting and raving I think they should have came at least the first half of the show really airing out their grievances and then moving forward as opposed to just you know brushing it off and just sweeping it under the rug like it's no big deal because what's going to happen is that it's going to be another blow up in a few weeks that you know Joe Button will throw him under the bus again call him some other names DJ Academics will be in his feelings again because of the editing so I think that if they don't truly bear this hatchet it's just going to come back so anyways y'all that's just my opinion on this entire crazy situation concerning dj academics and joe button you know i definitely wish them the best you know and i think that whole jealousy word needs to cease at the end of the day these are just opinions you know what i'm saying charlamagne is entitled to his opinion joe's entitled to his dj academics is entitled to his and i'm most definitely honey entitled to mine these are just simply opinions. I don't think that it's about hate or even negativity. I think that that's a good thing about the internet and that's a good thing about these platforms that we have, that we're able to just talk to the world and bring our opinions to the masses. And you can agree, you can disagree, and that's cool. But all the hater talk and the jealousy talk is so stupid because, again, there's enough room, okay? There's several seats at the table for everybody to eat. 
So I don't need to be jealous of anybody. They don't need to be jealous of me. Charlemagne don't need to be jealous of them. They don't need to be jealous of Charlemagne. There's enough room for everybody to create their own niche. But unfortunately, it seems like in the black community, people feel like they can only be one team, only one person, only one person who can do this. And they feel like that person has a monopoly on, on certain things. And that, that's not how it is. You know, all of these people, include myself, were just people with platforms. I wish those brothers the best, you know what I'm saying? Um, um, DJ Academics keep doing you, Joe Button keep doing you. You know, I definitely feel like Joe Button's voice is needed. A lot of folks just want Joe Button to have a tall glass to shut the fuck up. But I think that his, his, um, but I do think he's needed. You know, even if you don't like him, if you don't agree with them, I think we do need an antagonist. We do need somebody who's a part of this so-called culture to, you know, question certain things, to question why a group like Migos is so popular, but then somebody who's a straight lyricist like Big Sean is not as popular. You know, I do think like those are questions that we need to ask, and, you know, we have to be real when we're talking about this thing called hip-hop that's feeding a lot of us, okay? Because at the end of the day, if it was not for hip-hop and the things that go on on social media, reality TV stars, all that stuff, none of us would have a platform. At least be mature enough to recognize that, you know, hip-hop and this whole culture is feeding a lot of us and it's a blessing so you know I can't do nothing but respect everybody's opinion and everybody's aspect and even if I disagree with certain things I can point that out but still be respectful okay so anyways y'all let's go ahead and get the discussion popping go ahead and leave a comment let me know your thoughts on this entire crazy situation once again concerning Joe Button and DJ Academics basically going at each other yesterday but now they've kissed and made up <laughs> <laughs> Literally, okay? So anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. All right. Deuces. Hey guys, it's your girl T. Make sure to subscribe, like, and share my videos. You can also visit lovelytea.com to purchase any merchandise. Also, don't forget to click the boxes down below to watch any of my previous videos. Talk to y'all later. Deuces.